Hello, I'm Charlotte and this is Books and Bargains. Today I'm coming to you with my first of my top tens of the year. I tried to divide my reading into what genres I'd read most this year. Romance slash contemporary was by far the top. And so I've split this top ten roughly into two parts. So this first one today is my non-romance. So we've got a bit of thriller, a bit of mystery. I think mostly thriller and mystery with one that I don't quite know how to class and a few kind of feminist dystopian type books and then next week you will be seeing my top 10 romances of the year. I have about 25 minutes to film this before I have to go and get Nana up so let's get into the books. Out of these 10 I actually only have four to hold up to you. Either I've passed them on to other people, I've read them via net galley or they're only out in hardback yet. So for example Let's go in with number 10 and that is Claire McIntosh's The Last Party. Now the reason that I don't have this with me is because I bought a hardback of this one and I left it in the kind of free library in Morocco for the next holiday makers to read. Now this, I'm surprised this is at number 10 actually which just shows what a varied year I've had because Claire McIntosh is normally top 10 five star and this is actually the first book of Claire's that I didn't give five star to I think I gave it a four four and a half but actually the more I think about it the more I really want to go back to it and reread it before the second one comes out next August so this is Claire McIntosh's first kind of police procedural thriller and we are following DC Fionn Morgan and I think the other guy is called Leo um, there's been a New Year's Eve party at this kind of celebrity, I think it's called The Shore and it was set up, it was sold off by one of the locals and it's become this kind of place for the rich and famous to come and play and there's always been a bit of a bla bad blood between them and the Welsh. It's on this lake that one side is England, one side is Wales so there's always been this kind of friction and on New Year's Day a body turns up on the shore and DC Fionn is from Wales and DC Leo whatever his name is is from England and they have to work together on this case which neither of them really wants to do at first. This bit was really interesting there were a few things that I didn't figure out until the reveal which when you read quite a lot of thrillers I mean I don't read as many as I used to but not knowing the twist is always good for me and yeah, really enjoyed it. I always enjoy Claire's writing and like I say, this is going to be part of a series. So I'm looking forward to getting my hands on the next one when that comes out next year. At number nine is a book that was kindly sent to me by Book Break. And this is We Had to Remove This Post by Hannah Berwitz. This book absolutely freaked me out. So on the surface, this book is a look at what happens to moderators so the people that sit behind social media and moderate what gets seen by the wider public and obviously this is a team of people that have to watch all these really violent um videos so my phone stopped filming in the middle of a massive rant so i'm not actually sure what I've said so let's start again. So we had to remove this post It's about a team of moderators who watch all things that get flagged as inappropriate so they have to watch some really vile um, things and what I really enjoyed about this one is it's a very short novella and for something so short to have ended up on my top 10 it really packed a punch it kind of reminded me a little bit about working in the NHS and the kind of things you see on a daily basis that you need people to talk to about, how it affects your relationships and it was just so good. I have pre-ordered a copy of this to come in paperback and I can't wait to get my hands on that. 
In the number eight spot is People Like Her by Ellery Lloyd. This is the second Ellery Lloyd book that I've read and the second one that I have absolutely loved. I am looking out for my own copy of this one, but not one that I felt that I needed to rush out and pre-order. And what can I say about this one? I think there's a bit of a theme here that when it comes to thrillers and mysteries, etc., I like this kind of either social media aspect or celebrities gone bad and people like her was a fantastic look into the dark side of social media our main character whose name absolutely escapes me is a mummy influencer and she has got her following from sort of putting out there that she's this kind of messy hashtag relatable mum but actually it's all put on and it's just this deep look into how much of yourself you put on social media and what that means for other people I, without having the book here I'm hesitant to talk too much about plot points because I'm not sure what are spoilers and what's actually mentioned in the blurb but yeah that's it was fantastic I really really enjoyed it so that's both of Ellery Lloyd's books now that I have given at least four and a half stars to and I'll be looking out to see what they come up with next so in spot number seven is the only one I believe on this list that you may say to me belongs on the romance list but let me explain why it doesn't that is Milk Fed by Melissa Broder now yes there is a romance in this but it is so kind of it, this book is about so much more that I don't think it classes as a romance. Just bear with me on this one. So as you can see, this is the cover with the giant boob on the front. I read this back in the summer and I was reading it on NetGalley. And when I started reading it, I didn't like this book at all. But it was one of those books that when I finished it, I was like, hmm, that was weird. And then for weeks and weeks and weeks, I could not stop thinking about it. And I still haven't really got my head around what happened in this book. And I definitely need to reread it, but it definitely deserved a spot on this list. It has massive, massive content warnings for eating disorders and food restriction. But it has this relationship that forms between our main character and a woman that when she first meets she sees as kind of grotesque and huge and just yeah I don't know how to explain it it's just really really weird it's the first book I've read with Jewish representation and it's also queer and I really enjoyed how those two themes interlink like I said I've not read much Jewish fiction and I do have another Melissa Broder on my TBR, which I'll hopefully get to you soon. But yeah, if you like weird books, I'd read this. If not, don't. <laughs> what else can I really say about that? And then book number six, I really had to check this morning because I couldn't believe that this was only this year. I read this in January 2022 and that feels like an absolute lifetime ago. But this is The Farm by Joanne Ramos. I read the hardback copy that Victoria kindly sent me and I would put this in the category of books of, I think if you liked Only Ever Yours by Louise O'Neill, you will enjoy this. This is a kind of more grown up but along the same lines vibe as that it says a gripping story about race money and motherhood that asks what would you sacrifice for a new life and we are basically following this farm where surrogates pay to have these women basically looked after um while they're pregnant for them so the girls are paid a lot of money to be there but from day dot, we know that there's something a little bit amiss. Obviously, it's a farm of pregnant women. And it just kind of looks at how we treat women in society. Um, I don't feel like I'm giving any of these a really good description. Because whereas with the romance books, I feel like I can kind of put the plot together. All of these took so much brain power to read that I'm like, 
I don't fully know how to describe them and make them sound as amazing as they actually are but yeah really really enjoyed this one and again keeping on my TBR definitely will need a reread of that one. It doesn't help that if I've read books earlier in the year as well my brain doesn't hold on to too much other than that kind of feeling that I really knew that I liked them and as well I've been keeping a Google spreadsheet this year of I, I have like a rolling top 10 so when I read something I'm like yep that's top 10 I go on and it only gets on to the top 10 if it knocks others off so yeah so hopefully this next book I can tell you a little bit more about because I did only read it in September but I'm not holding out much hope for myself. That's Night Crawling by Layla Motley and I bought this at the airport. I'd heard a lot about it but I didn't expect to love it as much as I did. So in this book we are following our main character who lives in a kind of rundown area. She lives with her brother but they're pretty much left to fend from for themselves. Again I don't want to give too much of the plot away. There are things that keep popping into my head that I want to say, but I'm like, no, that gives the plot away. One of the criticisms that this book has had, well, it's either been a criticism from some people and a praise from others, and I really liked it, is that there is quite a juvenile writing style to this. I think the author was 17 or 18 when she wrote this, but there is just this innocence in these really heavy themes and I just it took me a while to get into but again it's one that I couldn't stop thinking about to the point that when it came to leaving Morocco I had decided that I was going to leave all the books there but I just couldn't leave this one because I knew that it's one that I was going to want to revisit so yep that is Nightcrawling by Layla Motley. Book number four is In the Dark by Claire Allen and I read this via NetGalley. I had already read earlier in the year The Nurse by Claire Allen and I think I've read another one but I'm not sure. Most people I think know Claire Allen from Her Name is Rose because a few years ago that was a big everywhere book. I didn't read that one. I still have it on my TBR. Take a shot every time I say that. Um, but In the Dark was fantastic. Like I'm now thinking like it should be higher up this list but it's at number four and I think that's very good. In the Dark isn't actually out yet, it comes out in January so if you like the sound of it go over and give it a pre-order. But basically we are following Nora Logue who is infamous for a disappearance of her daughter. Um, her daughter went missing at five years old, Daisy, and ever since it happened Nora's not been able to remember what happened um and all over the true crime world on podcasts forums this has been discussed and discussed and discussed because people think they know the story um there is a huge camp of people that think that Nora killed her child and got away with it and it's one of these really emotive cases like that when a new journalist decides that she is going to make a new documentary on the Nora Logue case Nora decides to speak to her personally much to her husband's dismay and things go from there I've said with Claire Allen's books before they're such fantastic thrillers on their own and this one tackles mental health and not in the usual tropey we can't trust this woman because she's crazy line that a lot of thrillers seem to go down this was really sensitively handled and I think that the thing that I love about a Claire Allen thriller is that if you just just reading it and taking it at service level surface level it's a really good thriller but then if you scratch down into it a little bit there is such a discussion about kind of internet culture and true crime culture and the fact that we might all think we know what we're talking about on these cases but there is an actual person there underneath that it's their life that it's affecting. I've always been a little bit on the fence with true crime documentaries and things. I don't watch them um, because they... I don't know it just makes me feel a little bit uncomfortable knowing that this is somebody's life and we're 
we feel as viewers that we have a right to pass judgment and make our own decisions when actually we only get the viewpoint that the media tells us to get. I don't know, but it's very, um, I've got a lot of thoughts about things like that. But yes, after the dark, in the dark, after the dark, after dark. I can never remember what it's called. I think it's in the dark. In the Dark by Claire Allen is out in January and highly, highly recommend that you pre-order it. Now, book number three is one that sat in the top spot for a little while this year, and that is Idol by Louise O'Neill. I have now read three Louise O'Neill books. I've still got two more on my TBR. That's the theme of this video. But Idol, again, fit with this very much theme of social media and not knowing if the if what's being portrayed to you is the truth or a curated version of what you want to see um so at the beginning of idol we are following sam i think her name is she is this kind of wellness guru in the online space and she is talking about and trying to promote her new book she's very much throughout her career promoted like women being sexually however they want to be and open sexually and then all of a sudden she is in this book called chastity which has kind of thrown the press a little bit and they don't know what to make of her it's thrown her fans and she writes an essay for a online magazine all about a sexual experience she had in college with her not college when she was still living at home with a friend female friend and she then gets an email from this friend or her publisher gets an email from this friend saying actually what she said there is a lie that's not how I remember it she sexually assaulted me and a lot of I feel like I don't need to say there's a lot of content warnings because there is in every Louise O'Neill book, but a lot of content warnings for that kind of thing. And we see it from their two viewpoints. And Sam herself is now navigating kind of cancel culture and things like that because she quite rightly has spent her career promoting the message that victims should be believed. So then when she says that's not true it didn't happen she finds herself stuck in this situation where her message to the world is that victims should be believed but then somebody is coming at her with this accusation that she herself says isn't true so yeah it's very very interesting book and I changed my mind a lot through this um there's also the kind of Sam then goes back to her hometown to speak to, I think her name's Lisa, but I might have made that up, to speak to this other woman who has now got a family and connections and things like that. So it looks back at their friendship through kind of two lenses. And yeah, it was fantastic. It was, it was, it was a Louise O'Neill. What can I say? Um, so yeah, that is also it's already out in hardback i believe i read it via net galley and i will put on the screen when the paperback releases because again another one i've pre-ordered for my collection book number two and one that again spent some time sat on the number one spot is the mysterious case of the alperton angels by janice hallett i think when i watch back on this and edit it i'm gonna be like you have definitely got form when it comes to these these are all They've all got a kind of thread running through them, which it's kind of like, of course, it was going to be in your top 10. However, The Mysterious Case of the Alperton Angels is a typical Janice Hallett. I read The Appeal and loved it. Haven't read The Twyford Code yet. This book, again, is following a, a journalist who has been asked to write a novel as part of a series, like True Crimes Revisited and is asked to go back and look at the case of the Alperton Angels. Now she finds a box, or she's get handed a box with loads of evidence in, but it seems that anybody connected to the case or anybody that has tried to investigate the case over the years appears to have 
died in kind of mysterious circumstances. So everybody knows the case of the Alperton Angels where a cult leader and his some of his guys were found dead in the warehouse and there was a young couple and a baby. And like the appeal, we go through all these um, journal entries. I think on this one, it's more that it's dictated and actually there's a great, um, she's got an assistant that's di dicta is it dictating where she's listening to it and writing it down. And we have a few of her little asides in there as well. She was my favorite character in the whole thing. And yeah, again, I thought this was excellent not more I can say about it but then the book that is taking the top spot this year is also one that I just cannot stop thinking about and that is Reputation by Sarah Vaughan now this is the first Sarah Vaughan that I've read and I loved it I don't know if this was based on Jess Phillips but every time I read the character I thought of Jess Phillips I thought of how the media has gone for Jess Phillips on occasion. I'm trying to get that so that my light isn't shining in it. However, it says, reputation, a lifetime to build, one moment to destroy. And our main character is a Labour politician and she has an interview with a newspaper and she gets all dolled up for it. And then the vitriol that she gets for that is I want to say it's unbelievable but I've seen it happen to female Labour especially candidates over the years and so we know do we know I need to read the blurb because so okay let me read you the blurb Emma Webster is a respectable MP Emma Webster is a devoted mother Emma Webster is innocent of the murder of a tabloid journalist. Emma Webster is a liar. So we know from the beginning that she is going to be on trial for the murder of an innocent journalist. And really, I can't really give you much more than that. I just thought this book was fantastic. The way that the author weaved in all these different viewpoints and had me changing my mind about characters again and again. Another one with content warnings. I'll leave the link below to the content warnings database. I haven't made that myself, but it's very comprehensive because like I say, I can't remember specific content warnings in this, but there's a lot of hate against this woman. And yeah, I thought, I felt like I could have been reading nonfiction. Um, but yeah, fantastic. So there you go. That is my top 10 non-romance books of the year. Check back this time next week for the top 10 romance books of the year. As you're watching this, I am having a weekly a weekly hiatus. I am hibernating for the week, um, eating too much food. Probably not because my gut issues. And yeah, pop back next Saturday for the romance top 10 and until next time look after yourselves bye